Hi everyone, this is Steph with a little bit of Steph. Thank you so much for following my journey to see what God is doing within me as well as within my life. I don't know about you, but I sure look forward to what's to come. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining a little bit of Steph, episode 14, Perfect Blemish. Okay, so many of us deal with depression. And as teenagers, it can feel like it's never going to end, like nothing's ever going to be able to help you get through it. And that's what I want to talk to you about today because I may not be a teenager now, but I was. And so I want to help you uh, by sharing a few things um, that have helped me over the years. So I'm going to use my headphones so that I can hear my laptop help me along the podcast today, okay? So first, I want to share a poem with you. Um, it's called The Mask by a girl named Casey, and it perfectly describes what a teenager is feeling during depression. Um, at least it perfectly described how I felt as a teenager in my depression um, because so many of us just go to school or go hang out with our friends or go play volleyball or basketball practice or whatever it may be and everything seems fine. Come home, be around our families and everything seems fine. But when we lay our heads down at night, it's not okay. Um, I get that. I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like. So you are not alone. Um, I'm going to start this one with this poem. Um, so it's called The Mask. Put my headphones on. Okay. Okay, this was published in November of 2009. The mask. I'm great, fine, spectacular, in a way I relish every night and I live every day. I live, I laugh, I write, I sing. I wonder what the new days will bring. Then I get home and I take off the mask. The day, an almost impossible task. It's finally over, so I lie down and wait patiently for the day that I die. I cry, I scream, I bawl, I sleep. Even though I have promises to keep, I wait, I wonder, I cry some more. And I ache and burn from my very core. Then I'm not alone, and the mask reappears. Out goes the grief pain, and all of the tears. As I am a happy person, cheerful all of the day, a world full of rainbow, not a shade of gray. Of course I'm not okay, I'm not fine. No matter how much I seem to shine, I don't even know why I feel this why my existence is one long, endless abyss. But it is and will be, so I cling to life. As one day I might slip and end it with a knife. But I'm still not here, no matter what my dreams might say. And I hope that one day I will actually be okay. I'm going to say that last part again, because as a teenager, most of us feel this, and I hope that one day I will actually be okay. Depression isn't just feeling a little sad and unmotivated. It is not just a phase that will pass. It is not something that will be, that is okay to be ignored or taken as inconsequential. 
If you haven't ever felt depression before, there's a good chance that you will not understand the complexities of it. Depression is a very real, very serious mental condition. It needs to be understood and accepted by people in order for those of us who are dealing with it to be able to successfully recover. Um, oftentimes when we, I'm just gonna keep these on so I can keep reading through if I need to. Um, oftentimes whenever we're feeling certain ways, someone can make it seem like it's not that important. Uh, people that don't understand what it's like, that they hear about it but don't get it, um, they can really devalue and, and make, make us feel extra low. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna help you uh, with some tips as I go down um, about people and, and things like that. So um, just know that if, if you are not familiar with depression, it is a serious thing. Um, it does leave us feeling the way that the poem explained. Um, and if you are feeling this way, like I said before, you're not alone. Um, I might be in my 30s now, but it seems like just yesterday that I was 15, 14, 13, 12. I started cutting longer before, long before I was 12 years old. Um, but I do get it. Um, okay, so for me, um, like I said, the poem, I mean, it, it just fits perfect with the way that I felt as a teenager. Um, so I guess to help you a little bit, and I'll just explain some of what I felt, um, or what it was like for me, I guess. So as a teenager, I had a lot of friends. I went to a small school, but I was friends with like all the different groups of people. Um, I may not have always been liked by every person because let's just say I was what a lot of people referred to as the B word. <laughs> so I had a lot of friends, but I was so bitter and angry and hurt on the inside that I could snap your head off and be the ugliest monster you've ever seen. Um, so that's kind of the way my emotional roller coaster went as a teenager. And then, you know, I played sports. I played volleyball for a time. I ran track one year. <laughs> Cross country was not for me. Um, let's see. I, you know, I, I was every average teenage girl. I liked the tanning beds. I loved going to dress up for proms and homecomings and loved going to the basketball games. Uh, we didn't have football at our school, but loved going to the football games at neighboring schools. <laughs> um, you know, it was just all those things, but all of that was nothing to me at the end of every day. Nothing to me. Um, not that I didn't care about people, but I was so depressed and so so lost in this deep hole that I didn't even understand. Um, so nothing mattered uh, to me. I was living through the motions, doing what I was supposed to do while I was here on earth. And I knew, I didn't think, but I knew something in me knew one day I would try to kill myself. I knew that. Um, I think a lot of teenagers know that, and that's a scary thought for parents. That's a scary thought for teenagers. Um, but that's the way that I felt. Um, secretly inside, as I was living out the life that everyone hoped for me to be, inside, my constant thought was how I would die, was that I wanted to die, was that I hated myself, was that I was worthless, was that I was ugly was that I was stupid. All of the things that, that my, my abuser said to me growing up, um, you know, it's, 
it's all those thoughts that at night when wherever I was, that's when I laid there and thought the most, like, should I do it now? Um, if you've been following my story, you know that as a, as a teenager, I was taken in by my daddy's sister and her husband, who I call my mom and my pops. They're wonderful parents and I love them greatly. Very blessed to have them. Um, unfortunately, no matter how hard they tried, enough just wasn't enough for me. And I would lay in bed at night after they went to sleep and after their daughter, who I call my sister now, uh, would be asleep across the room from me. I would lay there listening to everyone in the house breathing, different noises, the house creaking. Um, but my main thought was that I just wanted to die. Um, so many times I considered doing it then, but I just kept thinking that I would hurt people and I didn't want to do that. Um, I didn't think it was fair for my little sister to find me that way. I didn't think it was fair for my parents or either of my younger brothers to find me that way. So I didn't do it, but I thought about it every single day, all day long. It is not an easy thing for a teenager to go through. It's so scary because you get this, like, you're here with me right now, you get this. As a teenager, you don't have control. Everyone else is in control of your life. So the one thing that you're struggling with the most, the one thing that feels the hardest and the scariest, that one thing you are in control of. And for me, as a teenager, I thought, well, I'll just wait. But now, knowing what I know, being through my attempt, because I did ultimately make that choice, but I survived. That choice left me blind. I lost everything in my life, everything. I lost so many people that I loved. I lost everything and had to start over. But in the midst of that, I found my faith. I truly found my faith. Um, and I will say that that's, that's the thing that really helped me to continue pushing forward in the right direction with my recovery. Um, but I get it. I understand how you feel. No one gets it. And that, that's how we feel. No one gets it. I'm in control of nothing. Well, guess what? You're in control of this. You are you can step up and do something to help you even though you're a teenager you can so we're going to talk about that as i go along here but i want you to know i have felt these ways i know what it's like but i also know what it's like on the other end so don't leave me yet stay with me because the episode is going to get better and it's going to end with a better poem okay <laughs> okay all right. Depression is a serious mood disorder that causes severe symptoms that affect how you feel, think, and handle normal daily activities. It can occur at any age. Depression symptoms can vary in type and severity. Okay, so Below, I'm about to read you some of the most common symptoms of depression. Um, if you're feeling these ways, I'm going to talk with you again at the end and kind of kind of help you through this and help you learn to make the right decisions when it comes to this because this is the one thing you're in control of. Your mind, your thought process, you control, okay? No one else does, you do. All right. Persistent, sad, or anxious mood. Feelings of hopelessness or pessimism. Irritability. Feelings of guilt, worthlessness, helplessness, or hopelessness. 
lost of interest or pleasure in hobbies and other activities, decreased energy or fatigue, moving or talking more slowly. I want to stop there and um, go to something really quickly. Um, I, I never really realized I'm, <laughs> until recently, I'm not one to really research a lot about suicide and depression. Um, I've been, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of, uh, the lone wolf, I suppose, because I built my recovery on myself and choices that I was making in life. Um, things that I decided to do, you know, uh, to help me through. A lot of things did not help. A lot of things did help. But moving and talking more slowly, um, I didn't realize going back to that. And, and the fact that I am not big on researching, I did not realize that was a form of a symptom of depression. Um, and so actually, my husband got me a sloth onesie as a joke and came home with it and said, I got you a surprise. And I got all excited and he gives me a sloth onesie and I'm like, okay, you walked into Walmart and passed the flowers and the candy and everything. And you saw this and you thought, that's my girl. <laughs> and he explained that it was because like I had started moving slowly and kind of talking slowly and stuff. And so I was this cute little sloth. But now I realize that that was because of my depression. I was kind of moping around and wasn't even aware that I was doing it. So um, you may not know that you're doing these things, but you might be. <laughs> uh, feeling restless or having trouble sitting still. Um, I think it just depends on my mood, depending. I mean, sometimes when depression hits me, I get all of these. Sometimes I get half of them. Sometimes I only get one or two of them really strong. So, um, difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decisions. I noticed this past year, I have not had a very good memory. Um, I'm not sure, but it's, it's just been maybe in the last six months. I've noticed I'm forgetting a lot of things. If I talk about something with someone, I'm like, oh, I forgot, or, oh yeah, you're right, I do remember that now. Um, that's that's happened to me often. Um, I've also been in one of my most depressed states this past year, so um, maybe that's why, I'm not sure. Difficulty sleeping, early morning or oversleeping. So it can be any of those things. For me, depression was no sleep. Um, I am now regulated on medications, um, and along with a mixture of other things, <laughs> and the, the medication is, is seriously helping me to sleep a lot, so that's awesome. Appetite or weight changes. Thoughts of death or suicide or suicide attempts. Okay. So, did you know that you can have real body symptoms, like of, of like an illness for depression? I'm learning that in my own trauma therapy at this time. Um, so, chest pains, regular body pains, headaches, cramps, or digestive problems without a legitimate cause and are not easing with treatment. Um, that's definitely a symptom of depression. There's no blueprint for depression symptoms. So um, I've read all of those out to you. And like I said, sometimes they all hit me. Sometimes only one or two hits me really strong. Um, sometimes it's one, one day, another, another, and it just bounces back and forth depending on how much my emotions are racing. Um, so if you are having any of those, those symptoms, um, and you feel that you could be depressed, um, please, uh, please know that you're not broken. You 
can be okay. There, there is recovery. Um, I deal with depression and I, I will deal with it my whole life. I get that, but there is recovery. There is ways for you to heal. Um, I'm currently working on healing from some of my trauma um, because I have situational depression, you know, as well. So um, I'm working on that and, and you can too. There's, there's different ways that you can, can work on things to help you through um, all of these different symptoms. Um, so I'm going to stop before I go further on us. Because as teenagers, we know people. We know other teenagers, um, other adults, but likelihood of it is that we know other kids our age or around our age that are dealing with depression. Um, so seeing someone go through a depressive episode might leave you feeling like you can't help them or you don't know what to say or do. Um, you're afraid that you'll do the wrong thing, but as long as you know what, what depression is and, um, the symptoms of it, you can help someone that's suffering through. So, um, just know, like, even if it means that you're just empathizing with them, you can help them, um, through what they're going through and be that friend to them. Um, so here, what I've done, and I've, I've listed it to make it easier for me to remember all of it, and I can kind of talk different things through um, that have helped me. So if you are a teenager and you are depressed right now, you can reach out and talk to someone about that. Um, I'm going to go into that further on a little bit further down into the podcast. Um, but first, I want to talk with you and... and tell you things that helped me that others have done. Um, because if you are a teenager and you know another teenager that's dealing with depression, maybe you can try these things to help them. Um, if you yourself are going through depression, these are things that you can make a list, your own list of things that would help you. And you can talk to whoever's going to be your top supporters and let them know these are things that could help you when you're feeling depressed, okay? Um, so for me, it may seem simple, but ask how you can help. If you are someone's supporter um, or someone's family member or friend and you can outright tell that someone is depressed, don't just sit there helpless. Ask them how you can help. Um, it's such a simple thing, but just a, just a question, how can I help? Um, they may say, I don't know, and that's okay. You know, you, if you're depressed, you may say, you don't know, and that's okay. But it helps to know that someone's thinking of you. Whether it's just a simple text message uh, saying, you know, I love you, or I'm thinking of you today, or can I help you through this? Um, or, you know, just wanted to say hi, whatever it is, a funny meme, the thought counts, the thought helps, it matters, okay? So um, just make sure that you're doing that for those that you can tell are depressed. And if you need this, make sure you communicate that with someone. Um, put together a care package. Um, you know, whether it's just a uh, you know, a, a little gift bag from the Dollar Tree with a couple of different candies in it and maybe a smell good candle and some body wash and a loofah from the Dollar Tree. Um, you know, if you know that they enjoy bubble baths, you know, and reading books, maybe you could get them a good book and a bubble bath, uh, you know, some bubble soap for a bubble bath um, and a little candle, just a small little candle, um, you know, a book of devotions or something like that from the Dollar Tree. So uh, it can be anything. It can be as, as something um, like reaching out and, and bringing a meal by, you know, just saying, hey, I've cooked you this cobbler. Or I've cooked you this casserole. May I bring it by today? Or would you like me to put it in the freezer and, and bring it by in a couple of days? You know, um, 
just make those efforts and, and offer those, those words of encouragement, that, that love, you know, um, that lift up. Okay. <laughs> so on really depressed days, chores are bad, right? They stink. Um, not that they're fun for any teenager ever, but on really bad days, on really low days, chores are not so fun. So, you know, if you're a sibling and you can tell that your brother or sister is feeling kind of low and you just can tell something's not right with them, maybe you can offer to clean the bathroom if it's their day to clean the bathroom. Or maybe you can offer to take out the trash for them this week, you know, because it's just sometimes it's hard. You know, um, for me as a teenager, sometimes I would pretend to have tummy aches and stuff like that so that I could lay in bed all day and cry because I was too depressed and it was too hard for me to get up and go to school. So, um, you know, if, if you recognize that someone needs the help doing these things, or if you're a parent and you recognize this, show them that you care and that you're trying and that they're not alone. You offer to help them with the chores. Don't use this as a way to abuse the situation with your parents. But if you need the help, ask for the help. If you see that someone needs the help, offer the help. <clears throat> okay, don't get frustrated or upset. Um, if someone declines or cancels plans on you because they're depressed, um, for us, it's hard. I mean, getting up and brushing our teeth some days is hard, but getting up and getting dressed and leaving the house and going out with people or getting up and just having to, uh, you know, entertain someone even at the house can be too much. So if they decline, don't be angry. There are gentle ways that you can encourage and nudge people to let you be there for them during depression. But sometimes it's okay that they want to be alone. Sometimes it's healthy to have a little bit of alone time, to sit there and think through your thoughts, to process through everything, maybe cry through everything. It's not unhealthy to cry. It's not unhealthy to sit and Think about the thoughts that you're having and try to try to figure them out, you know. Um, and it's not a it's it's not wrong to ask someone to help you with that either. So you don't have to do it alone. But um, if you notice that that someone's declining spending time with you, um, or if you're noticing that you're declining spending time with someone, really stop and think about like, is this because I'm depressed? Is this because they're depressed? And think about it from there. Um, just don't be angry because depression isn't something that we can just wake up and say, I'm gonna smile. We can try, but it doesn't always, always work. <laughs> There's other things that get us to that smiling point, okay? Okay, I struggle with this, <laughs> um, which may be not that I, um, had any major mess ups when I was facilitating support groups, but I always wondered if I would be bad at that because of this. Um, listen without trying to fix. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So you don't have to analyze or fix every situation that is brought in front of you. If your teenager comes to you and says, mom, I'm depressed and this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. Step up and help them with the things that they say they need help with. If they're just trying to talk to you because it feels good to let it out, then stop trying to fix everything because all you're doing is frustrating them further. Am I right? Am I right? Teenagers? Okay. I thought so. Um, as a teenager, it drives us crazy because, or anybody really, it just drives us crazy because we're just 
trying to talk. We're just trying to vent. We're not asking you to fix us. Um, and if we are, you'll know. So um, maybe next time someone's talking with you, it's okay if you stop and say, before we go any further, I just want to clarify that this is you just venting or is this something that you would like feedback on? Would you like advice and feedback? So just clarify it. It's no big deal. It's not a bad thing if you do clarify it, okay? Okay, never invalidate someone's feelings. Um, when we're feeling low and depressed and someone is saying, well, if you just got up and took a shower, you'd feel better. Well, that's not always true. Um, if you just slept a day in my bed and walked an hour in my shoe, then you would know that. Um, that's the thought that goes through all of our heads whenever someone tells us what to do. Um, it's It goes from that to well, gosh, I'm just worthless. I I don't know why I'm having these thoughts. I should be able just to get past it and just get in the shower, like they said, and just get over it. It'll make me feel better. And then you take a shower and why aren't I? Why aren't I better? Something's wrong with me. So a simple statement like that can throw someone's emotions one way or a complete other way and just mess the thought process and the feelings, you know, all up. So whatever you do, value, you know, make it important what they're saying, you know, empathize with them. Say, you know, let them know things that I understand how you're feeling. I get it, you know, relate to them. Um, as a teenager, you know, it, it's not that we're needing a fix. We just need you to relate to us. We need someone that gets it someone that understands. Um, so just don't devalue what someone's saying, okay? <laughs> be there when they need it. And when I say be there, actually be there physically and mentally. If you say, I'm here for you, and you never answer your phone, or you say, I'm here for you, but you tell, but you devalue what they're feeling. That's not being there. Um, be present. When you are there with someone and you're talking with them and you're saying, I'm here for you, don't play on your phone. Put your phone away. Turn it off. Put it on Do Not Disturb. Put it away. This is a situation where your phone does not need to be running you know, on Facebook and Twitter and everything else that you're doing, because that is not the priority of the moment. Um, as a teenager, if you're feeling depressed and you feel like you want to sit down and talk to someone, be there, put your phone away and sit down and talk to the person that's going to help you. Um, because you've got to be present if you want the help. This goes both ways. I know sometimes in therapy, my mind is going all kinds of directions. And so I might be like, huh, I'm sorry, what was that again? Um, and it's because I get sidetracked and I'm having to remember to be present because this therapy is important. It's helping me. So therefore I want to be here for it so that it can help me. Um, so just remember that you want to be present always. Okay, so here's one that a lot of people will love. Um, anytime someone offers to pamper me, whether it's my husband painting my toenails or a friend saying, let's go get a pedicure together, um, you know, or a lunch. I love a lunch date. To me, that's pamper. If a friend just calls and says, you know, I know that you're struggling right now. I want to treat you out to lunch. I would love to do that, you know, so there you go. Find ways to pamper someone that you care about that's feeling depressed. Um, if you like to be pampered in different ways, whether it's a haircut, a back massage, um, a pedicure, uh, a day of golf, whatever it may be, 
write down the things that would help you feel better and make sure you have them on your list to give to those that um, want to be there for you. Okay. Okay, so here's um, some tips that I'll share with you that I have done that have helped me. Um, so talk to someone you trust. Someone you trust can be a friend. It can be an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, uh, a teacher, um, you know, your parent. It, it can very well be your parent. Um, just make sure that if, if there's someone you trust, talk to them because that's where it starts. If you don't sit down with someone and say, this is what I'm going through and I don't know what the heck is wrong with me, then it's going to be really hard to get you through it. So the main important thing is to recognize that you're going through it and number two, to reach out for help. I'm gonna sit here and tell you right now that I have reached out for help multiple times in my life. And I've recently done that more than once, just in the past four or five months. So um, do not feel like you're alone. Um, I personally, a long time ago, thought that it made me weak that I was so depressed. I thought that it made me weak that I was falling apart and felt like I was broken into a million shattered pieces. Um, but I'm, I wasn't weak. I wasn't weak to ask for help either. So, um, just know that if you talk to someone, it's just going to make all the difference in a better direction, not a worse direction. So make sure it's someone you trust first. Try not to isolate. So a few things here um, that I do to keep me from isolating. Now, as I stated before, it's okay to spend a little bit of time alone. I am, um, at times, I'm a hermit. You know, sometimes I like to just be at home alone. It may just be me and my worship music. It may just be me walking around and have total quiet. Um, I may just be walking around listening to a book. Who knows? But I do like my alone time and that's okay to be alone. I think it may be healthy to have some, some form of alone time, um, the, especially these days with so much social media and even in your, even in your video games these days, it's, it's like social media. I mean, you're, you're talking and there's a lot of bull, there's a lot of bullying going on there. Um, there's good stuff too, you know, good conversation. Um, but it's good just to kind of step back and step away from all of it. So, um, so trying not to isolate means spending time face to face with friends who make you feel good. Um, friends who are active, upbeat, and who are understanding. Um, I would suggest that you stay away from friends who abuse drugs or alcohol. Um, uh, stay away from friends who put you down. <laughs> Um, I had a friend who I am no longer, uh, friends with now, um, where just a couple of years ago, she and I sat down and we discussed things and I kind of put some boundary lines out there. And in those boundary lines, I told her that, um, those little sly comments that she would make about, uh, my weight because she knows that's something that depresses me so bad is being so tiny. I, I don't like being tiny. Um, and so she would often look at me and say, like I would have the greatest day and we would maybe go to brunch or something and I would climb out of the car and be saying goodbye and things went great. And she would just look at me and say, you look sick. Have you lost weight? Well, that was her main thing. She used other things, but because she was a, a larger person. So my weight was the biggest thing that she put me down on to make her feel better about herself. And I explained to her that that behavior was not okay. For, for a few years, she had ripped me down 
um, every time I hung out with her in some way or another. And at that point, I was completely done with it. I realized she's putting me down because she doesn't value me for who I am as her friend. She's jealous of me and the way that my body looks. And, and I, and I hate to say that because I don't want it to sound like I'm being ugly. Um, but you have to recognize when someone is being hateful to you and they're spitting out comments that hurt you all the time, they're not your friend and you need to separate yourself from those kind of people. Um, I have a lot of friends that like to go out drinking and stuff like that. And I used to love doing that too. I, I say used to, I love drinking, but I quit drinking. I am a little over five months sober right now and it has made a world of a difference. So I can tell you that um, a lot of my friends that I was partying with all the time haven't even called or texted me in months. So um, it doesn't mean that just because you're hanging out with someone that they're really your friend. Um, some of those people haven't even bothered to respond to my text messages and I have reached out to them just trying to say hey or some of them because I was desperate and needed someone to talk to and they wouldn't even respond to me. So it just goes to show that not everybody is really your friend. Um, be careful the type of situations that you put yourself in and who you call friends. Um, anybody that is doing drugs or alcohol on a consistent basis every single time you're with them and that's all they wanna do to hang out with you, um, I'm just going to say from my own experience that that is unhealthy and that's not a true friendship. Um, it's one thing if you're all mutually, you want to go out here and there, yes, but true friendships are built on more than just going out partying and drinking together, okay? So just remember that um, there's going to be bad where, where lots of drinking and, and drugs and stuff are involved. Um, on a teenage level, let me re go back a little bit because friends drinking and stuff, not good. So I was that friend one time. I was that bad friend. I was a new adult, but still technically a teenager. I uh, was so young and I eventually got arrested for it, but it wasn't what I should have gotten. I am aware. Someone was falsely arrested for what I should have been arrested for. And yes, we were all drunk, except for the girl that got arrested. Um, so it, it's not a good thing. It, it's one of those where there's a ton of alcohol and a ton of drugs and stuff involved. It's always going to be one of those stories down the road where you wish that you would have made a different choice in your friends, um, where you wish that you would have made a different choice for yourself because one of those wrong place, wrong time, wrong people kind of things. Yeah, it's, it's that. And then you end up becoming the wrong person without even meaning to um, because alcohol tends to make you do things that you might not would do if you were sober. Um, depression is a big thing from that. Um, depression, alcohol, seems like it soothes it, but it really only feeds it. Um... Get involved in activities that you enjoy um, or that you used to enjoy. Uh, for me, I used to love, or, and I do love dancing, but I guess I'll say used to because I haven't danced since November. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, so that's on my set of goals to look for a new dance studio and, and um, get myself back up and going uh, with a new dance partner and stuff once I'm back on track financially enough. So um, that's one thing, but going, my husband and I have really been enjoying some disc golfing. So that's an activity I like to do that keeps me out of the bars. And, and um, uh, we started hiking this week. So like I said, that's a new thing that we enjoy doing. Um, I personally enjoy writing. I enjoy doing these podcasts and I enjoy uh, making tutus. So I enjoy reading books. There's all kinds of things. So whatever you enjoy, make your list of stuff you enjoy doing activity wise and things you can do with groups, things you can do alone. And because it's healthy to do some things alone sometimes too, you know, so um, 
just make sure you make that list and, and, and add in all kinds of different stuff that you can do because one day you might not feel like being alone. So what can you do with your bestie or what can you do with your group of girlfriends? You know, so make that list of important things. Uh, some days you might not feel like doing those things, but if you make yourself I promise it'll help. Um, a little bit, <laughs> maybe not that whole take a shower and you feel better type attitude thing, but there's been days, for example, once I was in front of the dance studio, or I wouldn't say once, but this one in particular time I'm referring to, I was in front of the dance studio in the car with my husband and I was just crying so terribly bad and didn't want to go in. But I forced myself to dry my tears and to go inside. And after practice, I felt a million times better. So um, just push yourself to try the things that you feel like you can't, that you feel like you're not strong enough to do because more than half the time you'll feel better once you give it a chance. Okay, so volunteer. Doing things for others is a powerful antidepressant and happiness booster, but do not push yourself too far. Hmm. I love to volunteer. That's been one of my biggest self healers in my depression, um, in my recovery, but it's also been one of my biggest hinders. I have caused myself more depression, more struggle, more pain, more hurt because I don't know when to stop and I struggle with my boundary line. So just make sure that when you're volunteering that you have your boundary lines. And as a teenager, it may seem like it's difficult to volunteer. Talk to your parents. If you know that you have an elderly person in your neighborhood, talk to your parents and ask your parents if they would be comfortable with you going and, and talking to this person or this person's family if they have a caregiver and ask if it would be okay if you just randomly did their yard one day, you know, or um, maybe, maybe there's uh, some local nonprofits. Lots of organizations will take, accept teenagers to volunteer with them because of Bright Futures scholarships. So um, you can call like your local Habitat for Humanity, or um, if you're like in the Northwest Florida area, there's lots of different uh, programs, nonprofits that you can volunteer with um, really anywhere. So just make sure that you just like talk with your parents and let them know that you're interested in volunteering and see if they would be okay with helping you research some different places that you could volunteer at or ask them if they would be okay with you doing your own research and then you come to them with a game plan you know maybe it can be like something neat something you're excited about maybe you can try to like sell the pitch to your parents to let you get involved in volunteering somewhere so um maybe you can put together like a poster board and put some ideas on it, stuff that you would like to do and set a goal and at the beginning goal and at the end goal and go from there and try to pitch that off to your parents. And maybe that would be something to help you stay a little bit boosted up with the happy. Um, for me personally, volunteering for causes that I believe in are really important and mean so, so much, but I have to be careful with my boundaries. So make sure that you're careful with that. You don't have to say yes to every single thing that an organization calls and asks you to do just because you're signed up to volunteer with them. Um, make sure that whoever you volunteer with understands that you have a boundary line and that you're only available on the certain days that you say that you're available and the times that you say you're available. Okay, so don't let people take advantage of you. Cut back on your social media use. While it may seem that losing yourself online will temporarily ease depression symptoms, it can actually make you feel worse. Comparing yourself unfavorably to your peers can be really, really unhealthy. Even adults, yes, guilty, right here, sometimes still make those mistakes. Um, you know, reading on social media and you're reading about um, your friend who got this grade or your friend who, um, you know, accomplished this in the gym or whatever it may be. Don't compare yourself to people because you are so beautiful and just 
so wonderfully made all you and you get the one thing that's the coolest thing in the world that we all get for only ourselves and we get to define who we are no one else gets to do that so don't compare yourself to other people find you design you build you grow you define you as you not as anyone else okay um, another reason in my opinion to stay away from social media is because of bullying um, you know uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in the world because of COVID-19 so there's a lot of bullying there's a lot of negativity there's also a lot of positivity but sometimes when you're trying to scroll through there's so much negativity that it's just pointless and for me personally it was time to remove myself from it um, and I'm feeling great uh, when I find myself up doing things, um, you know, making something special for my husband or for my dog or for myself, um, and I wouldn't be on my phone. Like, that's, that's cool to me. All the time now, I'm walking around, and my husband's like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Because I'm normally, like, spoiled, and he does most of it. So I'm looking at him like, I don't know, I just want to because I'm not on my phone. <laughs> um, there is a lot that you can find to do in your time if you get off your social media. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, number three, I want to remind you to use healthy habits. So. Different healthy habits will help you to kind of stay on track. Maybe, um, you know, these aren't just by themselves gonna always work. So just remember that it's, it's work, okay? It's work. I'm not giving you this list to tell you that you can do one thing on here and get better. I'm helping you to realize that you can build your own list and you can work for it because it's gonna be work. I have no magic words that are going to make it all disappear, um, but I can help you learn how to work through your recovery so that you can feel better in the long run. Um, get moving. Ever heard of a runner's high? You actually get a rush of endorphins from exercising, which makes you feel instantly happier. So yesterday, walking two miles, not just walking two miles, but hiking two miles through the woods over tree trunks and, um, you know, not the trunks, but <laughs> tree roots everywhere and stuff like that. Um, afterwards, we both were like, oh my gosh, that was so awesome. I first of all can't believe that we managed to both get off the couch and walk two miles. I exercise every day and kind of hardcore, but walking two miles is a lot different than the type of working out that I'm used to. So. Um, get up, get moving, whether it's take a run around your neighborhood, um, do some lunges down your hallway, uh, get out in the yard, play some basketball in the driveway, whatever it may be, get moving because getting up, getting moving, getting physical, you know, it's, it's going to help, um, throw on the radio. Even if you just get moving at home, just get moving while you're rocking around the house, doing your chores, you know, um, it will help. Uh, let's see. Be smart about what you eat. An unhealthy diet can make you feel sluggish and tired, which can worsen depression symptoms. I know I love junk food, but I also have to make myself eat healthy food because I want to be a healthy weight. I want to be healthy emotionally and mentally. And when I eat crappy every day, I feel crappy every day. When you feel crappy every day, your thoughts are crappy every day. So when I eat good every day, I feel better and my thoughts are better. Avoid alcohol and drugs. You may be tempted to drink or use drugs in an attempt to escape your thoughts and feelings, but that's not the good healthy way to go. I, unfortunately, um, not knowingly, but was self-medicating with alcohol for a long time, for many years. 
and it wasn't getting me anywhere except for a massive mental breakdown. Um, and I especially encourage you, if you're on any type of mental health medications, do not drink at all. Um, that can be very, very bad. You know, any illegal drugs, don't do that either. Um, so just try to keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy by keeping your body healthy. <clears throat> I love this one. Aim for eight hours of sleep each night. Um, feeling depressed disrupts sleep. I get that. Sleep is hard. I'm not here to preach to anybody about getting your eight hours of sleep a night because I'm thankful right now that I'm getting seven hours of sleep per night. But it took me 33 years and a lot of different uh, tries, different stuff, you know, different medications I've tried and everything to finally get me to the right balance. And it took honestly a mix between my mental health medications um, because I'm on two different ones that finally helped me sleep at night. So I'm not here to preach to anybody about sleep. I know that depression makes it impossible to get sleep. Um, but your mood will suffer unless you can find a way to help you sleep better. So if you're struggling with your sleep, please talk to your parents about that. Um, maybe there is a way, maybe there's some all natural vitamins or something they would be comfortable with you using to help you get some better sleep at night. Okay, so a few tips for managing stress. Um, it begins with recognizing where it stems from. So just remember that if you're stressed about something, you're not gonna be able to fix it if you don't know where it came from. Um, if your exams or classes seem overwhelming, talk to your teacher or your school counselor, um, even to your parents. If a combination of work, school, friends, or sports are causing you stress, then it's time to step back review, regroup, and find better ways to manage your time. If you have a health concern you feel you cannot talk to your parents about, such as a pregnancy scare or drug use, um, there are local clinics that can help you with those situations, and they can also sit and help you talk to your parents about those situations if you feel like you want to or need to talk to them. Um, and for those of you who are not aware, um, you are protected by HIPAA, even though you're a teenager, unless your doctor is in fear of you harming yourself or someone else, what you say to your therapist or your doctor is private between you and your doctor. You can call your regular pediatrician too that your parents normally take you to, and you can let them know what you're feeling about your um, medical situation and um, you know, it, and ask them for an appointment to, and help you talk to your parents about that um, if you need to talk to your parents about something. Um, if, if you're struggling to fit in or dealing with relationship, friendship, or family difficulties, talk your problems over with a professional, such as your school counselor, or a professional therapist. Um, there are like call lines, text lines that you can use um, that can help you as well. So uh, for example, you know, you can text 741-741. You can text home to them and um, they can help you. It, it's like a 24-7 a text line. So you have someone to talk to so you're not feeling alone. Um, you can talk to someone on there as well. Exercise, meditation, breathing exercises, um, those are all other good ways to cope with stress. Negative thoughts, are they squall swallowing you whole? <laughs> um, well, I fall down in the pit of negative thoughts quite often, and these are some of the ways that help me. Um, what I do is I talk myself uh, down. So if I wake up and I'm feeling like I 
well, honestly, a lot of times when I'm feeling depressed, I just can't explain it. I'm just feeling blah and I don't really know what's wrong with me or why. I'm just like, uh, um, and so what I do is, and I know this sounds silly because I cannot see, but I will stand in front of a mirror and I will talk to myself and I will say, girlfriend, you are beautiful. You are smart. You are brilliant. You are sweet and kind and good. And I'll talk myself up in those ways. Um, so sometimes I just get lost and whether, you know, I might just be in the shower and just and lost in thoughts and my thoughts I realize are negative. And I just stop myself and say, oh no, not today. We are not doing that today. And I will start thinking good things. Either I'll start humming a song or I'll start um, thinking about something positive like the podcast that I'm doing or um, I might uh, start praying, you know, so whatever it may be to help you get out of those negative thoughts, don't let them swallow you. As soon as you recognize, as soon as you realize that that's what's going on inside your head, put a stop to it right then and there and talk yourself up rather than slipping further down. All right. So in saying all of this, you don't have to be alone. You can sit down and you can talk with someone about the way that you are feeling. It's okay to not be okay. It's not a weakness to feel like you're sad, to feel like you're depressed and to feel like you need help. It is strength to reach out for help. So just know that if you don't have someone at home that you can talk to, please, please, 741-741. Text home to the number 741-741. Um, you can look up the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and there you will see a lot, of, just a host of information. You can go to NAMI.org and there's a host of mental health information on there that could help you mental health um, stuff, uh, honestly, that could probably help you with talking to your parents and stuff. Um, you may find easier ways like that through NAMI. Um, you know, so just, I would definitely encourage you to talk to someone. Don't do this alone. As a teenager, it was some good times. I'm Yes, I did. I have some good memories. But the bulk of my teenage years was full of my depression and it didn't have to be. I didn't have to go through it alone. Um, so you don't either. And just remember that there are lots of ways that can help you through these negative times. Lots of ways that can help you to, you know, know that it's going to get better. It is. Um, some of my depression, uh, you know, it stemmed from my, my lack of love from my parents. Um, it came from uh, the, the lack of love from a parent who unfortunately passed away much too young. And it wasn't that he wasn't, that he didn't love me. It was that he wasn't here any longer and he couldn't love me. Um, my other stems from my lack of love from my other parent, where that person was in my life um, on and off throughout my whole life. Um, take I was taken in and out of the home by Department of Children and Families um, and given right back over and over again. So I have a lot of depression from the trauma that I went through from, from not feeling like that parent loved me. Um, I felt like that parent only kept me in their life because I received a check for my dad's death benefits. And um, that's honestly what I feel that they cared about. And um, it sucks to grow up feeling like a parent doesn't love you. It's a horrible feeling. Um, it can make, especially, you know, a girl, it can make us feel like we're worthless. It can make us feel like um, the love that we needed from that parent. Not only was it not there, but that we weren't good enough for it, you know. Um, 
I guess that can be for anyone, whether it's a girl or a boy. Um, you know, it, for me, it was the lack of mother's love. For you, it may be the lack of your father's love. Um, some of my depression stems from my own choices. Uh, I become irrational often when I'm depressed and then I ruin friendships and I ruin relationships. And um, I just, I feel like I ruin a lot of things in my life with my depression and it's unfortunate, but I have. And um, I hope that you don't make those mistakes. Um, so one thing that I will encourage you to do is when you're feeling this way, don't, don't lash out. Definitely get off social media. Definitely. Um, don't post or say anything that that you will regret. And oftentimes everything you'll say when you're depressed is something you will regret. Um, you know, so it stinks. Being a kid, or at least that's the way everyone looks at you, and not being in control. It just feels unfair. It feels like it's never going to end. And I'm telling you that you have control of this. So stand up, reach out and ask for help because you are so wonderful. You are so smart. You are so kind. You may not know it. You may think you're not, but you are. It's in you. You have it in you. And you just need to get through this. You don't need to get through this alone. You're not alone reach out, okay? Um, there's someone in your life that you trust. Talk to them. Share with them how you're feeling. Share with them what your needs are, if you know what those are. If you don't know what those are, it's okay to still tell them that you're feeling blah, that you're feeling broken, that you're feeling sad, but you don't know how to describe it. It's okay to say those things just to let someone know where you're at, okay? Um, in saying all of this, I am special. Whether I have the love of my parents, um, whether, you know, I accomplish every goal I set out to make, to meet, <laughs> um, whether I have a bad day, and I'm grouchy or hurt someone's feelings. I'm still me. I'm still special. And I am my perfect blemish. You are your perfect blemish. No one's perfect, but you're perfect in your own way. You are God's perfect blemish. I am too. So just look at it like that, okay? And I'm going to leave you with this poem because this poem right here encourages me. And I hope that it encouraged you. Finding a Will When Wanting to Quit by Tiquin L. Norwood. Times will get rough and sometimes tough, where you may say that you have had enough, where you may fall and need a lift, where the hurt of your pains may leave you stiff. When all things may seem to go wrong, just pick up some faith and carry on because you may never know how close you've come to be to reach the throne of victory. There has been some time that passed that many thought they could not last. But with a mighty blow, they've come to see that they have made history. When you may feel that there is nothing that you can do, here is something that you can refer to. As some people say, where there is a will, there is a way. With this being said, I feel a brighter day, one without hurt, without sorrow, one with a brighter tomorrow. So in the fight, you may get knocked down, but get back up without a frown because it's when your hardest hit that you must say that you will not quit. So push on harder and hear me when I say, 
quote, when there is a will, there is a way, quote. So just remember that you are God's perfect blemish. And although you may not be perfect, you are perfectly you. And that's okay. And just remember that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to reach out for help. It's not weakness. It's strength. I love you. God bless you all. And I hope to hear that you have done what you need to do to help you get through this. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free or comments to comment on the video or to email me at from trauma to triumph p cola at gmail.com. That's from trauma to triumph p, the letter p is in Pensacola, c o l a at gmail.com. Bye. Thanks for watching, but before I go, I want to leave you with this. You are special. You are kind. You are smart. You are wonderful. You are worth it. You are important. To reach out to me, please do so by commenting or emailing from trauma to triumph, p cola at gmail.com. God bless you all.